everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and my craft table. It is so nice to have you here today. So today's video is all about the fractured card. Now I have been seeing these all over the place and I just had to learn how to make one myself. So I have been watching lots of videos, getting lots of tips, and I thought that I would share those with you today. These are two that I have made and I learned a lot along the way. So I'm hoping that I can share some of the, you know, trials and errors that I've made so that you can have an enjoyable experience and try out your own fractured card. Okay, the supplies that you're gonna need for a project like this is you're gonna need some 110 pound cardstock. And I'm going to show you how to make um, a card base. That's what this is. And I've got some really cool tips for making a card base nice, quick, and easy. You are also going to need, um, well, you'll definitely need some glue. And I actually have some foam tape and some little pop dots so I can add some dimension. So glue for sure. You're going to need several pieces of paper. Now I'm actually going to explain all of these things in Cricut Design Space, which is where I had all of these pieces cut out for me. And you do not need that. You could use a paper trimmer, a pair of scissors, um, but I wanted to see if I could get my maker to cut out all of these little intricate pieces for me, which it did just fine. The other thing, so at a minimum, you need paper, you need glue, you need scissors. That would be at a minimum. The other thing is I like to have a little acrylic block to help with just pressing and keeping things flat. Uh, I have some pins here that I use to uh, create the back of my card panel. And then I've got some embellishments, washi tape just in case I need it to help me hold something down. And then I've got the foam tape and the pop dots for dimensional elements. I probably need to take you over to Design Space so that you can see what elements are needed and then you can make your card. So I'm in Design Space and I'm actually gonna go to my fractured card template that I started yesterday. Had a great time um, planning this out and trying it and seeing what worked and what didn't. So if you are starting from scratch, then you would need just a blank canvas. Okay, so some things that are happening here in my design space. First of all, this pink represents the A2 card base, and I actually don't need that to be cut out. Now, if you do, you would keep something like that. It is four and a quarter by five and a half. I don't need that. In fact, I could probably just delete it from the file. Working from the base up, we need a card panel. That's what this is. It is four by five and a quarter. Okay. Now these lines here are score lines. Then I found that they are actually very helpful and so I cannot take credit for that. That is definitely an idea from another crafter who's put out some great designs, but she suggested to definitely put the score lines and I found that that is actually pretty helpful. Um, at a minimum, the score line at the top, which is three quarters from the top edge, that would be the most helpful if you didn't wanna put the two on the side, that would be okay. All right, so the next thing are these three here. These three strips are going to go around our center shape and they will be glued directly onto the panel. And these are one quarter by four and a quarter. Then I have one of them that is one quarter by two and a quarter. And all of these will be glued down onto the panel itself. The next thing is the actual center element, which is two and a quarter by two and a quarter. And this is what will be glued down on the panel and we will put the shapes or the strips around it. And then the last, this white one here is a two by two square. This is a six by six. You do not have to use a six by six piece of paper. Um, I had a double sided piece of cardstock that I used for my other two cards, but the, the, um, 
you, you don't have to, you can actually just, you know, put these in there separately. So I'll go through the sizes for you. So I have two here on the bottom and both of these are three by three and three quarters. And you need two of those. Then this top right is a four by two and a quarter. And then the next one is two by two and a quarter. You could actually cut all of these out separately from different uh, pattern papers. I just happen to be using a six by six piece of paper that was double-sided with patterns on both sides. And so I, they're together. These can totally be um, cut separately. Um, another thing that you could do that I like to do is I find some sort of sentiment uh, in design space and I like to make sure that it's um, welded together so it cuts as one cohesive image and then I do an offset so if I were to have hello I could come up here to offset and then you'll see that the blue lines okay that's how wide your offset is and then I'm gonna change that and you just go down to where you like the offset to be. Um, and I want to say I had mine at like one, uh, let's see, 0.125. So basically an eighth of an inch all the way around. And then you hit apply. And it will create an offset for you. Now, generally, it'll just choose the color that it wants. So here is your offset right here. I do like to go over to contour. And especially if I don't need a little piece like that, then I can hide that. And now it's one solid piece. And this will be the shadow layer that goes underneath my sentiment. And I'll show you how that works when we're actually building the card. And so I like to make a whole bunch of those that just get cut out by my Cricut Maker. And then I just keep them stored so that they're available when I need them. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to the craft table and get our card started because I actually already have all of these things created. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to separate all of the pieces. So like I said a little uh, bit ago is I had my maker cut out all of the pieces for my cards. Um, in fact, I've been working on a set. so. I made the hello. This was actually my first attempt, and I think it actually came out pretty good for, you know, not really knowing what I was doing. And then this is the one that I made second, and I just think it is so gorgeous. For this one, I added some dimension, so the words actually pop off of the page. This one, the words are just flat on the page, so there's definitely a different look but this one has a little embellishment of a like a little rhinestone so two totally different looks same process and then I do have another set and this one will be a congratulations card so that will be my fourth card in the set and then this one is going to say, it's your day. This is the shadow layer that cut out. And then this is the sentiment and it'll go on top. So this is going to be last. We don't need that right now. These two pieces right here, um, these, and I can actually, the more I'm thinking about it, I might change them up a little bit, but this would be the, um, the center and then this would be on top of that okay and then I've got these pieces here these will go around the center all right these are my little pieces there and they, they do kind of go in a particular order so we'll talk about that and then I have these strips and these strips are the these are the magic this is where everything really comes together by the way, your strips in your in your panel base don't have to be the same. You can use any color of paper that you want. You can use any patterns. So it really doesn't matter, okay? All right, let's go ahead and start getting this built. Now, let's see here. This is a 
butterfly accent and I'm actually going to put it down right here. And what's going to happen is, is I'm going to line up the top of the, so now it's, you know, no longer square, now we're a diamond. I'm going to line up this point along this score line. And I know it's a little hard to see the score line on camera, but I can definitely see it on my end. And then as far as the left and right sides, these will hang just ever so slightly over the edge of these two score lines. Um, so again, if you didn't make those, that would not be a big deal. If you don't have um, a maker, what you can do, and this is actually something I do with my card bases, is grab your paper trimmer and you can take your panel and close your, I'm not going to cut it, I'm actually going to use my bone folder and I can score that, okay, and you can see the nice score line and that actually will be really helpful when you go to line everything up. So you don't have to have a maker to, to do that. And these strips, now this is a happy accident. <laughs> I forgot that these were cut on double-sided paper as well. And I actually think I'm going to use this side instead of the red side. That is just going to pop against these. So what a happy little accident. A, that I forgot that that was like that. And B, that on a whim, you can change your mind. So that's the beauty of that is just the beauty of card making or crafting really um, is you can change your mind mid project. I love it. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to take some glue and this is just regular glue, you know, craft glue. It's nothing super special. Um, and I'm going to get that all around the edge. And you could even be fun and festive and, you know, I'm going to draw like a little flower in there. You can totally do whatever, you know, crafting is supposed to be fun and relaxing. So then I am going to, and I want to try and keep my hands out of the glue. So I'm going to use my tweezers. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm one of those that kind of has to center things on top of like each other while I'm standing up and I've got a little bit of an edge there and a little bit of an edge there okay and that is the liquid glue is great because you get some float time okay and then I like to use an acrylic block just to press it down I like to keep my hands from getting sticky with any residual glue so I just find these little tools are really helpful. You certainly don't need an acrylic block at all. Okay, so there is my little diamond. We're going to separate these pieces here, these little decorative strips, and we're going to put this one on last. So I'm going to set that aside for right now. These three are the same size, and we're going to start here in the top right. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw myself a little line of glue and I'm going to pick up one of these little strips and I'm literally going to just place the strip next to the butterfly paper and I want it to hang off the edge so absolutely it just needs to hang off of the edge and it doesn't really matter how much, just a little bit on each side is good. Okay, let that sit for a second. Grab your next one. Okay, we're just going to keep working our way around the card in a clockwise fashion. And like I said, you can use any type of craft glue. You could even use regular, you know, you could use Elmer's glue to do this part. You could use a glue stick. Um, again, it's just paper crafting. We're going to line up this strip here. We're going to line it up with this one and slide that so that it touches and that it be meets up with the square. Okay. 
All right. And then we're going to grab our third one. And I, I'm just working my way around this card panel. Like so. I've seen these cards all over. And they, I mean, they just look so difficult. But they are really easy. Okay. And the last one. Okay, so this last one is a quarter by two and a quarter. And it's going to slide right in here. I mean, that is a really significant, uh, really specific, um, you know, and I'm just going to slide it in there like that. It's very, very specific measurement. And when I first was doing this, I was like, oh, why is that so different? Well, because it slides right in there like that. So, okay, now we got that. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to go around in the same clockwise fashion, and we're going to use our pattern paper. So this is the order I'm going to go, and I'm just going to literally go around all the way around. Okay, so... I'm going to, and this, by the way, is not double-sided paper. You definitely can use whatever paper you have. You could even use all solid colors. This would be a great um, card to do with your littles. Or I don't know, maybe you have some teens that like to do crafting. Okay, I'm going to turn it this way. And I'm just going to line this paper up. It, it'll go over the edge. I'm going to line it up. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. This time I'm going to use red. But yeah, you could have, in fact, like I'm just sitting here thinking about my own daughter who's 12. This would be a great party like if her and her friends are into crafting I don't know maybe not all 12 year olds are into crafting but if they were you could totally just pull out all kinds of paper and have them come over and just make a bunch of cards this would be really easy for teens to do and they could make a whole bunch and you could just have all kinds of embellishments you could even use washi tape like really you could go to town I'm, I'm thinking this is a great idea Okay, so where this strip butted up with the other strip there, I'm going to do the same thing with this. And I'm just going to slide that in there. Okay. All right. I'm going to turn my card. And I like having that block. You could even use a book. You could use anything, really. I like just having it there and giving it a little bit of pressure without having to think about it. Okay, that was probably too much glue, but, and let's see, do I want that one? Or, oh yeah, I think I want it this way. Okay, I'm gonna just slide that over and that, okay. And then spin it around, put the block there. Okay, now we're to this last piece. And you do need to be mindful because if you stick it in where the two inch side is against the strip, you obviously have gaps. So you want to make it to where it's the two and a quarter that goes in. These colors are just, they're just great. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to trim all of these little excess pieces off. And you have a choice, obviously. You can just get a pair of scissors and go to town. Um, I personally like to use my paper cutter. However, 
I find that it's helpful to give my paper like a starting point. That way I know where to, to butt up the, um, the paper against the top. And then these little pieces, you're going to have a whole bunch of these, so I would just save those off to the side. Okay. So like I said, I'm going to take this flat part, and I'm going to butt it up there, and then I'm going to be mindful that this edge of my paper is lined up next to the track. I'm just going to run that right up the side. And now I have all these little extra pieces. Get those out of the way. And then I literally can just turn and continue to do the same thing. So paper trimmers make for quick and easy work. Obviously, if you had that teen party I was talking about, you would probably not have a bunch of paper trimmers. <laughs> they would probably just need a bunch of scissors. Okay, so this is our card panel. And we're going to add this on top, and then we're gonna put then we're gonna put these. All right, so where did the glue? Okay, so the glue went here, and I I actually once I cut this out, I, I did trim it just a little bit because I wanted the butterflies to show through. So even though this is supposed to be a two by two, I think mine is actually like a one and three quarters. I just wanted to make sure that I could see some of these butterflies. All right, and then I like to make sure that everything just kind of lines up. So I get this part lined up here, and so I line up one of the vertical and one of the horizontal. Okay. All right, I'm just going to let that sit for a minute, and let's talk about the this. So this is my shadow layer, and then this is my sentiment. So I have the coolest stuff. Um, my husband is so sweet. He bought this for me with um, kind of a pack. So it's the Smart Paper Sticker Cardstock. And I wasn't real sure what I was going to do with it. It's for the Explore and the Maker 3, but it's 13 by 13 inches. And, you know, it, the idea is that you can just make a whole bunch of crafts. Um, it says that it works without a cutting mat, just load and go. I'll be honest. I had trouble loading and going, so I do, um, I do try to just pull, off, pull, you know, cut off what I need, and then put it on a mat, and it works fine. And so the back of it is adhesive, and it's medium weight, so 78 pounds. And I definitely, you know, keep it in this in this package when I'm not using it. Okay, so on the back. It has this carrier sheet, and that will that's what is covering up the adhesive. And then I like to pull off the part that I'm not using. You know, just real similar to weeding your vinyl. And it and it does it really, really easy. This is some really good stuff. And so just like you are going to be weeding your vinyl, and this just comes right up. Okay. And then you always have like, you know, I have these middles. These come up really nice. Okay. And these tiny little ones. In fact, I think this one I'll have to pop out and get that out of the way. And this one there. 
Okay, so how this works is you lit is I'm just gonna pull off the carrier sheet and I'm going to put this down and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna place the other couple of elements. Okay. So I'm kind of get that. Okay, that placement looks good. And wow, that really pops. I love that. Okay, and then I'll pull this one off. This one. Okay, that one. And then finally we have our tiny little circle. And that's just going to go right in there. Oh, that looks great. I'm so glad that worked out because I um, don't really have a, a huge die cutting machine or a bunch of dies for that matter because of having the Cricut. But if you did have a die cutting machine, this would definitely be a good way to put that to use. So if you don't have a Cricut maker, you can use scissors, glue, paper, and if you have a die cutting machine, you could put this on there. And then this is just going to go, and I could put it really anywhere. I could, in fact, I'm not sure that even the white was needed, but it is kind of back there, so that is helpful. And then I'm just going to put that like so. But I'm not going to put it flat. I'm actually going to use some of those pop dots, assuming that I can find them. <laughs> And we're going to just stick a bunch of those back here. Okay, there's all of our pop dots. Sometimes I think I overdo it, but I just don't want everything to be saggy. Okay, so another thing that I've learned is, and I got this from Kathy Zilski, is just adding a little spot of liquid glue to the pop dots um, it gives you some float time because when you stick these down they're gonna stick but if I have just a spot of glue on each of these little dots then I've actually got some float time to make sure that my positioning is correct There's one down there. It just allows me to position this where I want it. Okay, in fact, let me I'm gonna just put this here and this is my misty. It's just going to hold this card panel for me so that it's not sliding all over. And then I can just see where I want it to go. All right. So I'm going to just let this kind of hang out for a minute. And I want to talk to you about the card base. This is an A2 um, card base. So basically it is four and a quarter by five and a half. And what I do is I take an eight and a half piece or eight and a half by eleven piece of paper and I cut it vertically, and then I go score it. And I score it the same way. Um, well, sometimes I have my maker do it if if I can think of that much ahead. Um, is I I cut the paper and then I put it in my maker and I have the maker score it. And I have the maker draw, so I have my pins, and I have it draw out what I want it to say, um, since I don't have a rubber stamp. And that may be something on my list, but it may not. I may just keep going with the pens. It's kind of fun. Um, and then I can just use kind of any design and change it as I want. But take your bone folder and use it on this track. 
and now I've got a really nice score line. Okay, and then you just fold it to the back. So now you have your panel. Let's see how this deal is doing. I think this is great. I love this. Okay, so I am going to actually I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm just going to use this kind of to just hold it here out of so I it's kind of you know not moving around sliding all around on me and then I'm I'm not placing this in the corner I'm gonna actually I'm gonna float it over and it's gonna sit like that okay so let's get some foam tape and we'll put this on the back And you certainly can just, you know, put this down flat on the card base. So this is the third card I've done, and I just wanted to try a little something different and see if I like this effect. Definitely wish my tape was wider. I wouldn't need so many pieces, but hey, use what you have, and this is what I have. And then, definitely, this one absolutely needs some extra float time because this stuff, this is the stickiest foam tape. And I don't even think it's a good quality foam tape, but it is super sticky. So here we go. We want this to be as centered as possible. All right, so this is our final card. I um, try to decide if we should put a couple of these little embellishments on there or like, do we need, do we need a little embellishment or do we think that this is enough? Like it would go like that and then maybe one there. Let's see what these look like. I don't know. Does that look too much, too busy or does that look all right? So there's this one. I'll just let that sit for a second. All right, and then we'll do these two. We've got one more. Oh, that's better. Okay, and we'll just put that there for a minute. Okay, so this card is essentially finished. All right. Maybe I should add one more. Should I add one more over there? I need like a little cluster of three. I think we need one more. Just a smidge. Oh yeah, that's better. Yeah, help that help that along there. Okay, so all right, that one looks good. This is the card, and I think that the dimension is, first of all, really good. Like, for instance, you can see the words are, they just kind of pop up, and then you got the dimension on the sides. Obviously, you can write in the middle. 
So three different versions of the same card. This one, completely, everything completely flat, no dimension at all. This one, just dimension on the words. I think this one might be my favorite. I just, wow, it's just striking. Just dimension on the words. And then this one here where I have dimension on the words and on the panel itself. So these look great. I am super pleased with how these turned out. Okay, well, that's it for our project today. I really hope that a, you found something that can inspire you to go out and try a new craft or a new project um, using what you have. And I will see you in the next video. If you have not already, I'd love to have you subscribe. And if this video was helpful or inspirational to you in any way, don't forget to hit that like button. All right, guys, enjoy your day and happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.